take part in ground combat, but did assist in the operation targeting Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. Now, right now, DNA testing is underway to see if Ibrahim Al Azri is among those killed. He is believed to be the terror group's chief bomb maker and the man behind the failed underwear bomb plot in 2009. Now, for more, on the attack, I'm joined by Mohammed Jamjoum. He joins me live from Washington. And Mohammed, what more have you learned about this anti-terror operation? Well, Christy, we're hearing that the operation is actually still ongoing. Uh, this is a real commitment by uh, not only the Yemeni uh, counterterrorism forces, but also uh, the U.S. government uh, that back the Yemenis in these counterterrorism efforts. Because in the past, while there have been so many drone strikes these last several years, the fact of the matter is these operations have been ongoing now for three, possibly four days. Uh, it doesn't look like they're going to let up anytime soon. And you actually have Yemeni commandos on the ground in remote parts of Yemen, like Shabwa province, uh, where they carried out ambushes. Uh, for example, on Sunday night, uh, there was an ambush uh, by which uh, Yemeni commandos uh, on the Marib Highway in Shabwa province, which is a province that they don't usually go into because it's so remote and such a hotbed for militancy, they were able to kill a number of militants. Um, and it's among those militants uh, that they know that they had killed a Saudi citizen, possibly a high value target. And that's when the Yemeni started to believe that possibly, possibly they had finally gotten Ibrahim al Assyri. Now, DNA tests are still being conducted. It could take a couple more days, it could take a couple of more weeks. Um, but the Yemenis have told me repeatedly that what they want to do with this operation, not just target high value people amongst uh, the AQAP leadership, they want to degrade the capabilities of AQAP because time and again in the past they've taken out leadership of the AQAP organization, but that has done nothing to deter the growth and the resurgency of AQAP. So they're going after hideouts, uh, they're going after recruitment centers, they're going after training camps, and they say they're going to continue to do so in the days ahead. Christy? Both the U.S. and the Yemeni government say are out to degrade the capabilities of AQAP. But what do the people of Yemen think about this raid that's still ongoing and the ongoing U.S. drone campaign has been going on for years inside their own country? It's a very important point. It's a very good question because when you talk about this raid in particular, what I'm hearing, and not just amongst uh, uh, your average citizens in Yemen, but even amongst some government officials there, there is skepticism. There is skepticism about how much of this may be propaganda. There have been times in the past where the Yemeni government has stated that there was a massive uh, type of operation underway, not that massive at this scale, uh, but massive nonetheless, and it turned out to be not quite what they had advertised it as being. Uh, but when it comes to the drone question, by and large, a majority of the population in Yemen, just about everybody that I speak with, they are very upset about what the drone program has done to Yemen. You know, Yemenis live in fear because of the drone program. Uh, they feel that death can come at any moment, and they feel that there is too much collateral damage. And a good case in point to exemplify uh, the discussion that's going on about this came on Saturday, which was the first day of these operations, uh, when I was told by Yemeni officials that this uh, operation had been meticulously planned to avoid civilian casualties. I asked, well, how many militants have you been able to kill so far? I was told 10. I said, okay, have any civilians been killed by these drone strikes thus far in that area? They said, yes. How many? I was told at least three. Uh, that percentage is unacceptable to Yemeni people. They are very upset that more innocent civilians in Yemen are being killed uh, because of uh, the fact this is the way that the Yemeni and U.S. governments have chosen to go about trying to destroy AQAP there. Christy? And is Yemen extremely dependent on the United States to degrade AQAP? I mean, what options does Yemen have uh, on its own to curb al-Qaeda inside its borders? It doesn't have a lot of options. It is heavily dependent on not just the U.S., but also Saudi Arabia, its, uh, its neighbor to the north. Uh, Yemen is in a very difficult position, it has been so for years. It is one of the most impoverished countries, not just in the Middle East, in the entire world. And Yemen is a country with a very weak central government, despite the fact that it has had massive amounts of help from the international community uh, during the Arab Spring and after to try to uh, put forth a, a political transition and get a functioning government. It's still facing a lot of problems. There's still a lot of instability. And because Yemen is such a rugged and poor country uh, and is so mountainous, it is the kind of environment where AQAP has been able to get in there easily. They've been able to set up camps very easily. They've been able to thrive in that country. Uh, and because of that, it's always been very difficult for the Yemeni military to go after AQAP. The fact that Yemeni commandos are on the ground in some of these provinces, that really is unprecedented. Usually, they wouldn't attempt that because it's just too dangerous and they don't have the resources to go after AQAP. 
QAP in those areas. That's why they've been reliant on the drones. It seems there is a, more of a commitment now from the U.S., from the Yemenis, and possibly even the Saudis to really try to hit these targets hard and fast and really show AQAP that they're not going to just focus on taking out a top tier of people and yet leave the rest of the organization to rebuild once more. Christy? Mohammed Jamjoum reporting live from Washington. Thank you.